wait maybe a couple more minutes and we'll we'll get started really quick here i'll be sharing my screen for presentation it'll be kind of similar to what we had last time uh, but then at the end we're gonna go over and you can ask some questions of course give me a second here and again uh feel free to ask questions during uh during this live stream in q a box uh, we'll get to them at the end of the webinar uh you may also use chat on the side um so yeah that would be basically the only instructions that we have for you today okay okay let me share the screen <clears throat> all right um a little bit of introduction uh, my name is uh, Vlad Chitinian. You guys might have seen me on prior webinar. Um, I'm currently head of sales at ICO Box. And we also have Mike. I guess you can introduce yourself, Mike. Hey guys, I'm a co founder and I'm CEO of ICO Box. So nice to meet you here. Yeah, so I'm, it's kind of brief, but you probably know who we are. So I can tell a couple of words about myself, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm a serial entrepreneur and angel, uh, business angel. So I've been launching startups since I was 15 years old. So it's like 15 years already. Um, mostly in ad tech, in uh, fintech. And uh, last couple of years, I've been doing some crypto activities, investing in uh, coins, in ICOs as well. So a couple of months ago, we partnered up with my uh, good friend, Nikit Dakimov, and we started a new venture called ICO Box. So you can uh, clearly see it's going quite well. We're launching our own ICO, and uh, so far we already raised about $40 million in Bitcoins. Or in Bitcoins. So uh, basically, I think what you can continue about the ICOs, and then we'll have a like a question answer session about everything relevant to ICO to crypto world. Yeah, so basically the format that this uh, webinar is going to be taking is going to be a little bit a shorter presentation than last time I've given. So it's going to be mainly focusing on ICOs tokens because that's basically the biggest thing that's going on right now. And then at the end, of course, you guys can ask us questions. We'll be here till the last question is um, answered. Okay. Uh, okay, let's start. So uh, I'm gonna turn back a little bit. Um, okay, we have we're gonna have we gonna have chat live going on right now. Okay, good. So sorry. Okay, there's a few things that I wanna start right to start off. Uh, so we have some token holders' dreams that every single token holder, including myself, can have. And basically, it's the ability to buy you know tokens of already successful ICOs, but at the pre-sale price. So which means, uh, let's say you know you see the ICO, uh, you're still wondering if you should you know go in, but then at the end of the ICO, you still enter it through pre-sale price. That's really nice, right? And then there's also dreams on the opposite side of the team that conducts the ICO, and of course that would be something conducting an ICO with paying with their tokens. You know, have have a really really high quality service. Uh, but instead of having any upfront payment, you pay with your tokens at the end. Um, so for marketing campaign, for tech services, for legal, whichever ones you need. And this is where basically our ICOS uh, product comes in. We write pretty much right intersection between these two dreams. So how does this how does this uh, ICOS system works for those who don't know and for those who already who do? So it fully solves. The token audit issues and why is because we have a two-step screening system uh, I think I'll get to it a little bit a little bit later but basically yeah we solved the audition problem for you so you will see you know high quality projects on board with with uh, ICO box with with ICOS platform and we do offer professional uh, services to conduct ICOs and right now i think this number is 50 applications per day maybe it's, there's already a little bit higher than that 
uh, I'd say maybe like 70, 80. We're getting close to 100 applications a day. Uh, so it's, it's really nice. And we already have you know, a couple of projects on board. Well, not a couple, let's say 20 projects that we're working with at the moment right now. As you can say, uh, as you can see, kind of uh, many companies working with, but that's it's not even the limit. Um, and basically, what the ICUS, what the main future of the ICUS is that you can exchange the token for the ICUS to other projects in the ratio of one to four, right? And how does that work? Uh, when the project goes through the two step screening system and goes through the voting system, right? Uh, it does not pay any upfront fee for the ICO box service because, of course, the cost is 50 Bitcoin. We understand that not everybody has 50 Bitcoin. So that's why we did this ICOS program. So instead of 50 Bitcoin, uh, they provide us with 200 Bitcoin worth of their tokens. So that's where one to four ratio comes in. And basically, what this means is that having one ICOS token allows you to exchange four times the value right of the tokens of all these projects that go through the voting system through the uh, screening system um, and yeah you can exchange them at the time of the pre-sale uh, sale or even after the sale which makes it kind of a time machine right essentially and you can also control it which is also real nice uh, you see all these projects uh, that, that came through the first steps uh, screening system um, actually that's on the next slide but I'll still tell about it uh, so the first steps uh, screening system is that the ICO box team and the ICOS uh, like advisory board. So we all get together and decide which projects and, and we mainly filter by security tokens. We don't allow any security tokens on board with ICO box at the moment. So we're only working with product tokens strictly. So that's kind of the main, uh, the main thing that we filter through. And then the second part of the decision, the final part, is actually up to you guys, the token holders. So people who bought ICAS tokens, they will be able to vote. And during the vote, the token is not burned. So you can vote as many times as pretty much you like. So this is just a quick example. You probably saw it already that if you buy a $1,000 worth of ICAS tokens, uh, basically you have a $4,000 worth of buying power when you exchange it to to other to other tokens and that's what this token mainly provides the ability to exchange um okay so this is a, uh, pretty much the two step screening system that i've been telling you about and also what i would do want to mention again is that the quality of icos is high is it's it's because we are in this project just as much as you guys are uh, we get, you know, we get a share of these tokens that are provided by the company. We are doing the service for them, so we are just interested to have this, you know, the extremely high quality service for every single ICO that goes through ICO Box and through ICOS project. And um, a little bit of a futures behind this token. It's an Ethereum-based token, and we're actually working with Ethereum-based tokens through regular ICO Box service as well. Um, and so our ICOS token, we decided to make it Ethereum because we have really, really high expertise in terms of building Ethereum tokens. We have Dmitry Kovaratovich, which, who is a huge blockchain expert in terms of security. So this token, as I mentioned, this works kind of as a discount card or, I mean, has an access to other ICOs. Um, <clears throat> so this is a tool, right, which allows both experts and novices to minimize the cost and risks. And why so? Because of course the cost you minimize is because you have one to four ratio. Uh, the risks you minimize is because uh, you can exchange at any time of this uh, of the token sale, or you can may not even exchange at all if you choose not to. Nobody's making use. So you, you're free to do whatever you want with your tokens. And why it's great is because anybody can use it. People who just came into the market and you know they're wondering about the project, it's perfect tool for them because you know you see all these projects and you can choose whatever you want. You know, you don't have to go to every single website and you know try to find others online. It's all in here. And of course, professionals who would like to be involved in the project selection and bring in their expertise to the market and you know help perhaps choose uh, some projects over the other ones. Um, it's also good for the funds, uh, for large crypto funds that decide to uh, enter through ICOS program. Um, because we already kind of do the business analysis for them in the first stage of uh, filtration. So it's really transparent and efficient. So essentially, this is kind of a key to a private club. Uh, so bringing new projects to life, uh, supporting innovations. And 
the mission the mission of ICO Box is um, I've stated this previously, but I'm gonna say it again. It's to stabilize this whole ICO market that's going on right now. So what we did right now is we rolled out a service that everybody needs who would who like to do an ICO right and who would like to also participate in this ICO. So we spread this market widely because uh, we can already have 20 projects on board, which is a huge number, right? Around that and we're we're still growing. Our team is expanding. We're ready to take more projects and work. We're ready to offer you know as much quality ICO services as 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 possible, and we're gonna help this market grow and become more and more stable. So together, of course, with you guys, we can do a lot, a lot more. So this is kind of a brief overview of Haiku's token. Now we're gonna go into the question, and hopefully you guys got a lot of questions for us because we're ready to answer them um in right right now so yeah just to add a quick follow-up yeah about the whole situation on the market so we've all been witnesses of uh immense in, in, insane rise of ico market in the last couple of months yeah so from nowhere we're currently having uh, about hundreds of millions of uh, icos every month and this number is growing the number the amount of, of uh, money pulled in uh, icos is already bigger than venture capital funds and uh, uh, obviously, it attracts attention from different regulations. There is a lot of um, hype and not very transparent uh, companies doing business on the market. And I want um, to, to speak a little bit more about this. So um, what is the current situation uh, on the market? Yeah, so a couple of months ago, it was a wild west. Everybody was doing their own ICO with no compliance, with no, uh, no, uh, no client procedures. So just add a Ethereum wallet, make a fancy landing page and do a proper marketing and you'll, you'll get your money. So uh, obviously uh, the market is maturing now and uh, there is a couple of issues I want to discuss. First of all, as Vlad mentioned, there is different type of tokens, different type of ICOs uh, going on on the market. We need to tell apart the utility tokens, which primary goal is basically to be an inner currency of uh, some projects to be a uh, some um like a coin or some maybe like um uh something that can be used uh strictly in the project not for security not for speculation purposes not for selling on the, on the exchanges there is a security tokens that can basically be uh, considered as a, some kind of financial assets and uh, there is nothing better than them apart from um the need to to issue a security token you need to uh, obtain some kind of uh, license you need to go through some procedures uh, uh, speaking with the uh, regulation in the country you do your uh, token offering and you can't work with unqualified investors as well and uh, there is other problem with secure tokens i will address later lately and um, the most dangerous actually kind of token offering is uh, security tokens that pretend to be utility tokens and that the problem that actually all the um, regulators from different countries are talking about now. So we've seen um, a clear statement from SEC in the US that, uh, that stated that guys, okay, we, we recognize that ICO is a great uh, opportunity to promising startups or projects to raise some funds. We don't have anything uh, particular against the whole ICO stuff, but we need to make a proper approach, yeah? So we need to, understand what's going on guys either you're doing a utility ico or uh, in token offering and you're raising money strictly to use it it's inside your project you don't or, or promise some uh, i don't know super returns like x100 you don't promise some dividends you don't uh, promise some passive income you just use it as an inner some as a token yeah as a utility token something you can use uh, inside your project so it's totally fine. For example, Bitcoin is actually utility, kind of utility. Yeah. So if you have a look, storage is utility. There's a lot of utility, perfectly utility tokens on the market. And at the same time, they uh, told about the DAO. Yeah. So the, uh, the ICO that was basically a crowdfunded, crowd managed hedge fund that is clearly something financial. And uh, they stated that, guys, it, it, uh, this one, the DAO should, be, should, ha should have been registered as an. Uh, Financial institute in financial institution, they should uh, have obtained some license and uh, uh, do some QSC, AML, and so on. So the problem now is that uh, there is a huge amount of uh, ICOs in the market that 
somehow don't recognize this statement from uh, authorities. They just try to, you know, to play with fire, to protect themselves as chickens in the box, I'm not American, so on. It doesn't work. You must understand one thing. If you are pulling money in something that is clearly a security token, and it's pretending that it is a children token, you'll face two problems. First of all, you can face a problem that uh, all the Chinese ICO faced yesterday, yeah? So the Chinese bank, as I said, we postpone all the ICOs, we require all the platforms to, to do refunds. We need some time to understand what's going on on the market. Well, it's a bit tough decision, but I understand them. Yeah, the, the, the Chinese like to gamble, and for them, ICO is like an opportunity to, to actually take, uh, earn some money with extra risk. But uh, they need to, to take apart. Yeah, they need to tell apart what is utility token, and what, what is perfectly fine, and what is security token, and need to go through all, all the procedures that usually. Um, uh, required for your financial institutions. Uh, the same issue we got from uh, the same signals we got from different countries. And uh, for example, Hong Kong uh, yesterday or this night, they they uh, they took a United States approach. So they as well said that guys, we are totally fine with utility token offering, but if you are doing a security, please uh, obtain the license, uh, speak with us, and we'll figure out something. The problem with security tokens is that, um, first of all, you, you don't break you, you don't want to break the law. You don't want to buy some financial assets that is not covered by any but by anything. And the second problem is that uh, you have no liquidity. So uh, all the regulators they found a proper place to um, regulate the market, the cryptocurrency exchanges. We've seen that Polonix has already uh, delisted some of uh, security tokens and in the process they are cleaning their um, list of uh, tokens they, they list. Um, yeah, today, some Chinese uh, exchanges, they delist all, all the tokens basically because yeah, totally strict approach. And uh, well, as I mentioned, the problem is that uh, if you don't, Understand what is security token, what is utility token. If you can't tell them apart, please do some research. Read the white paper. Read about Howey test, family resemblance test. Uh, try to understand what are you putting your money in. We really have an opportunity to really support a good growing project to make us, you know, to make a difference in the market, to be uh, something disruptive. Or are you trying to play with fire? Are you trying to speculate uh, with uh, something that has no value at all? All right, I think we're ready to go to the questions, yeah? Guys? Yeah, we, are, we only got a few questions here. Um, if you, okay, yeah. If, yeah. if you could please ask them in Q&A box, we'll also look through the chat. Let's start with the ones in chat for now. Okay. So I guess you, you can take the first one. Uh, what effect will China's banning ICO make on the ICO market in the future? Well, yes, as I, as, I, as I already mentioned, it was a really good, straightforward approach. And um, while I recognize the wish to postpone this, to, to cool down the market, I think they will find some solution uh, very soon, maybe a couple of months. So they will uh, do some uh, different uh, laws for uh, utility token offerings and for security token offerings. And uh, currently, uh, Chinese token buyers, what, what options do, we, do they have? They can't invest, they can't buy uh, tokens uh, from a Chinese ICO anymore. So basically they will uh, try to go to Western markets, to US startups, uh, European markets, maybe some Japanese, but I don't believe in it. So my, my point is that uh, we'll see more Chinese money uh, in uh, Western ICOs. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Uh, lost the chat a little bit. Okay, the ERC two two three standard. Uh, do you know? Do you know what the, that is? That one? What about uh, the ERC? Yeah. Well, it's a nice standard. It's uh, it solves some problem that car that um, convenient ERC uh, twenty has. Uh, 
yeah, I, I do believe it's it's a, it's a possible future. The only problem with uh, implementation of this standard is that not all the um, wallets of uh, popular wallets support it. So that's why, for example, we use we stick with ERC twenty, not uh, twenty three. I think it's twenty three, not twenty three, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we stick with ERC twenty. Yeah, I think it's twenty three. I think it's twenty three. Twenty three. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of just more widely used, and people are more familiar with it, and more wallets are adapted to. ERC exactly 20. Okay, uh, let's start with we got, got 15 questions. Okay, I'm gonna start with the first one. How can my project apply to ICOS program today? So there's a very much there's a link that says apply for free ICO on our website on ICOS um, ICO box. You will see the link. Uh, you just apply your project and submit your uh, documents, your team information, and you will be on the voting. Uh, I believe it's October 2nd, right? Our first voting. Yeah, okay. we'll, we'll try to speed up the things a little bit. So, um, you know, the good scenario is we will have a first uh, bunch of projects ready to vote uh, like at the very end of September. So, mm -hmm. fingers crossed. Okay. How many people are on the ICO box team? There's about, let's say, 60 or 70 people, and we're expanding. Seven, very, very 70. 70 at the moment yeah yeah so, so we have we have team in uh, in the lane san francisco in canada uh, the one tech team in luxembourg in ukraine in russia some guys in thailand it's pretty pretty much decentralized yeah so we're we're just as decentralized as the blockchain is uh, um okay comment on china where you commented on china uh can you name your successful customers and show your portfolio so uh, as Cryptonomus, which was previous uh, company from ICO Box, uh, we closed off Gigawatt ICO at uh, $22 million. And currently we're working with uh, Paragon Coin, uh, we're working with Token Stars, and we're working with Plus Coin. And well, we're doing our own ICO as well, like an, an example. Yes, and as well, we're doing our own ICO um, currently. Currently, as Mike said, we're at about 14 million. Um, <clears throat> so that would be the answer to that question. Okay, so it's very confusing this system of token pre-sale. How can I see the projects uh, before buying? So you will see all the projects, uh, of course, on your on the platform in your cabinet when, when you when you vote, right? So when you vote, you already see the projects. You'll see their white paper, you see their team, and everything you need. So of course. Uh, you don't make purchase decision, I mean exchange token decision until you get familiar with the project. Um, you hope that, I think I think that, that was that was the question. Okay, you, you, you can take the next one if you want, so I don't talk, just myself. All right, okay, so there is a question in uh, chat. Hi Mike, I'm from Europe, which tokens I shouldn't get? Thanks, Jack. And uh, I think the, the pretty similar question is down the line. It's uh, the problem is who decides which token are utility and which token are security. All right, so uh, which tokens you shouldn't buy? Well, you know, the, the approach is very close to, the, to what uh, venture capital and business angels do, yeah? So we have to look at the team. You need to understand is the team is capable of what they're doing, what they're promising, what is their background? What is successful project they already uh, did and what they achieved actually? You look at advisory board. So, for example, there are some prominent guys who put their name on the uh, on the project. So you must understand that they they want um, risk their reputation and uh, it's like an extra plus for, uh, for for buying these tokens. But first of all, you need to answer the question: What problem exactly the team is trying to solve? So, what problem? What market do they address? And if there is a problem, how is it solved currently? without blockchain and why blockchain is the best solution. So why, why this team will be capable to solve this problem better with blockchain than anybody else without it. If you can answer this question, if the team can answer this question, the white paper landing and uh, videos and so on, it is a first big plus to uh, buy these tokens. Unfortunately, there's a lot of projects in the market who use blockchain uh, strictly to attract some attention to launch an ICO and to raise some funds. Well, 
I think uh, we'll uh, see more of them because, well, it's, uh, for, for, for a lot of the guys, it's like a free money. But you need to double check everything. You need to look through white paper. You need to uh, double check the team. You need to find out um, who's supporting the project. What, what, uh, do, do they have a big community of supporters or who is already uh, into this project? So, uh, and do they uh, implement blockchain correctly or do they are using it just for uh, getting some extra attention? Uh, next one will be about securities, yeah. Oh, there is no, uh, you know, easy way to tell apart security and uh, non-security tokens. The easiest approach, I think, is to take a Howey test. We can actually uh, open it if you want. Just double check. So just Google Hoi test. Uh, just small disclosure, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an attorney, so uh, small disclaimer. And I, I can't provide any legal advice, yeah? So just just my experience I'm sharing with you. So uh, the Hoi test basically says that uh, if uh, some asset uh, ticks the, all the boxes, or at least some of the boxes, in uh, in this test that uh, it can be considered as a security, yeah? And uh, there is like three common uh, boxes and the one is the number four I like to show everyone, that any profit comes from the efforts of a promoter or third party. So if somebody promising you that buying this token, you'll get some passive income, you'll get some dividends, you'll get some distribution of income or something like this. Uh, this is clear, clearly a security. So you must understand that you are risking if, you, if they don't apply, know your client's procedures, if you don't uh, understand how they will provide liquidity, how they will uh, use their tokens. Please think about it. So, um, uh, like a good example, a bad example, yeah. Uh, for, for example, storage, storage, yeah, the, uh, decentralized storage. It's absolutely transparent utility token, yeah. So you earn the storage, you mine them, uh, uh, providing your space, yeah. And you can use, utilize your storage tokens to buy some space. There is no extra, inc no, no passive income uh, on buying these tokens. It's like a inner currency for service, totally fine. And there is a couple of projects, um, I just want, I, I don't want to address them because it's like a bad PR, but uh, I've seen uh, some project that's currently is uh, closing the ICO and it's quite successful and uh, they put on the main page, yeah, totally tilt the token and then you open the white paper and then you see, we have um, dividends, we have buyback, we have, uh, uh, like a venture fund. So we use some incomes from our uh, uh, operations to buy back to our token holders. Guys, it's clearly security and you, you can't call it a utility. You can't go with it on a conventional ICO. You need to go through all the procedures that are developed for security launch. Okay. <clears throat> I think that answers that question. Uh, so Jake asks what obligations come with the voting for the project. Uh, if I voted for the project, may I refuse to exchange my ICOS tokens for their tokens? Uh, yes, of course, uh, that is totally possible. So you can uh, vote as many times as you want and you can, you know, you don't have to exchange for every single project. Um, if you vote, that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you have to exchange. So yeah, it's kind of advantage of the ICOS tokens, which is a complete freedom. Um, <clears throat> so that kind of answers that question. Now I have a general question. What is the safest way to keep and hold cryptocurrencies that I buy? Uh, on my own experience, I just, I would recommend some offline hard wallets like Trezor. Uh, there you go. <laughs> I was about to show one, but Mike has one in his hands. Yeah, this is just very, very secure um, wallet. So, <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, of course, well, of course, you make uh, you can make uh, the, you, you can download the whole Bitcoin node on the hard disk uh, and put them in safe and just do like a super secure hard, hard wallet. But I mean, Trezor is a, a bit more convenient. The most uh, secure way is a paper wallet. So I know guys who did a paper wallet. They cut the private key in pieces, gave them to their relatives, 
or downloaded the node on the flashcard and then uh, you know dig it in the back garden. But I mean, Trezor is better. Yeah, I personally think so too. Okay, uh, how big is your customer base? So as I mentioned, we do have about twenty projects on board right now, um, and we have seventy, eighty, hundred like daily requests for an ICO. So the base is growing bigger and bigger. Uh, we're definitely not complaining. I'm uh, looking forward to seeing even more requests in the near future. Um, yeah, and thousands of token buyers. So yeah, quite a big. Yeah. So you're not planning to give startups money, right? Only services. Yeah, ICO box is a service only. This is basically ICO service that we provide to the company, right? So there's we don't give money. We give ICO service in terms of legal, marketing, and tech structure. Uh, that should answer that question. Um, okay, when you do swap the 75% discount, do the company keep ICO box token? Um, is it limited to 200 Bitcoin? So when you swap your I, uh, ICOS token to another uh, project's token, the ICOS token is burned from the system completely. So it just disappears. And in, in exchange, you get the other project's tokens and four times the amount. Uh, 200 Bitcoin, that is the limit that's given to token holders to exchange. Uh, so yes, once that 200 Bitcoin is gone from the platform, there will be no more tokens available, of course, of that specific project uh, to exchange. Okay, it is impossible to conduct 800 ICO in a year. You're deceiving the market. Thank you very much for the challenge. Uh, we definitely accept it because we think it's very, very quite possible uh, with having 20 projects in just uh, one month and we're not even fully launched yet. Um, again, I mean, we're planning to take up a huge part of this market just simply because we're, we know we're ready to take up as many projects on board as there are like requests. And if you go through ICO box paid solution, we will already be on board automatically. Um, so, and we just see the demand in the market uh, so much that if you check the ICO calendar, there's like hundreds and hundreds of new ICOs coming up and I don't think it's going to be any issue to conduct this amount. Um, well, you know, you know we, we, we can just uh, make some comparison with venture capital market. Yeah. So uh, where, where do the venture capitals, uh, when, venture capital funds get the money? Basically, it's like a huge funnel. Yeah. On the very top, there's pension funds, mutual funds, there's all this uh, big pile of money that needs to be invested somewhere. On the second layer, there is a, like a hedge funds and uh, some um, other mutual funds, smaller ones. Third layer, venture capital funds and so on. So basically, if you imagine that, um, for instance, uh, like um, I've got, got, got questions a lot, uh, what will be the future of Bitcoin, yeah? So currently the whole capit capitalization, the whole cap of Bitcoin is like 70, 80 billion dollars. And just imagine that uh, finally SEC will approve Winkle was ETF with Bitcoin. Yeah, so every, every pension fund will be able to buy like uh, Bitcoin uh, worth of, of 1% of their uh, total assets will be in Bitcoin. We're speaking about trillions. So the cryptocurrency market will grow tens, so tens, uh, maybe even 100 times. And you may uh, also, sorry to interrupt, there was just a question that says, why did we base our finances around Bitcoin? So you might as well touch on that really quick. Well, we believe in Bitcoin. We believe that crypto world is the future. And, uh, you know, like, like an internet, what a, uh, like a groundbreaking solution that connected all the people all, the, all over the world, that uh, the blockchain is the same solution that created trust in this connection. And we believe in crypto. We believe in crypto world. We believe in ICO. We believe in Bitcoin. That's why we actually like, uh, I think like 70% of all of our operations are in Bitcoins. I mean, uh, we, we, we pay for advertising in Bitcoins, we pay for services in Bitcoins. It's totally fine. And you can pay Bitcoins in many, many places already. And there is no problem with using Bitcoins in your daily life. Like you, you can, uh, uh, you can order like a BitPay, HonorPay, or Xapo card. Uh, it's a debit card you can use every day, like a Visa MasterCard, and you can top up it with Bitcoin. So, I mean, Bitcoin, you, you can use Bitcoin um, everywhere, and it's getting wider uh, with every, with every day. Yeah, I, we think it's great 
Uh, so that's kind of the point here. Um, okay, we, let's ask a question from the chat. I have a concern from Ramesh that um, about there is not being enough ICO tokens for ICOS members. So will there be a line to exchange the tokens? Um, so yeah, the way it works is that when the tokens arrive to the platform of the specific project, there will be 24 hours to cover all parts of the world to submit your request for an exchange of your ICOS project, of your ICOS tokens, sorry, to, to the project tokens. So if the limit have met, if, you know, if the amount has not exceeded 200 Bitcoin worth of the tokens, yes, of course, it will be delivered uh, to whichever amount you requested. If the amount of request exceeds the amount of tokens available for that specific project, then it will be delivered proportionally on a market basis. And then um, if there's anything left um, after the first 24 hours, that will be distributed up in request uh, first in line. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what next. Okay, so it says you will attract the funds. Bitcoin rate will hit ten thousand dollars, and the cost of the conducting one ICO will drop. So you should lower the price in a year. Yes, of course, we definitely understand that the Bitcoin has a lot of growth potential, and we're not planning to keep the prices up always at fifty Bitcoin. So if the Bitcoin goes up ten thousand dollars, we'll probably lower the package uh, price to be on the same line with the market. So. Thank you for reminding that. Okay, answered that question. So there's a question to Mike. Mike, we have a project that we should like to start the ICO process. What advisory firm you think we should use for setting up the company? And does is ICO box a good fit for it? <laughs> well, I'm all, I'm obviously biased, but then <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, it's perfect. No, I mean there is like a. Um, you can count them on fingers. Uh, 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 there's like five companies in the market you can address to launch an ICO, and I we, we know them all. They're very good guys, perfect companies, amazing services. All of them are good. We are just better. Um, the question was, uh, how do you uh, apply for ICOs, uh, free services? Yeah. Uh, the question was, what advisor firm that we think you should get for setting up the company? I guess he's asking about the advisory board. If yes, if not, please, please correct please clarify, us. Clarify, clarify the question. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll keep this question open. If if we answered your question, let us know. If not, we'll we'll specify it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, meanwhile, do you charge upfront fees for your service? So yes, of course. ICO Box is upfront payment service so for uh, 50, uh for the full service for legal tech and marketing solutions uh we charge 50 bitcoin and three percent success fee uh for any two solutions of, uh, out of the streets 40 bitcoin and four and two percent uh success fee and one solution is 25 bitcoin and one percent success fee and keep in mind if you go through the icos program if your project does get through the icos program uh there is no upfront payment it's a post payment with tokens uh, as i mentioned four times the amount of the service provided but it's a post payment so it's very convenient for the projects to like you know to get in if they don't have enough money to start the ico today okay can you sell content on the platform for tokens and real money at the same time uh sell advertisement on the website both for tokens and dollars i'm not I where, where is the question? It's it's in the Q and A box. I'm trying to understand it. Can you sell the content? Uh, well, ah. yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Definitely. No, yes, you can. There is there is a, a number of uh, very uh, handy solutions for this, like the beat pay, the beat pay, coin payments, and so on. So no no problem with it. Yes, some yes, of them so, even, even let you to convert uh, the cryptocurrencies in fiat money immediately or other way. Uh, yeah, not a problem at all. Okay, okay. So somebody's here calling us scammers, okay? I'll be bringing to the market either scammers or startups who will be flooded with money but unable to digest. Now, this is why we have the two-step screening system and we're, you know, we're really looking into the projects in the first step. Uh, making sure, you know, there's no scamming, there's no security tokens, and this is a very, very high professional team. You can check our advisory board, it's pretty big. So we're really gonna make some really good decisions here. Um, 
And of course, the secondary voting will be up to the token holders. So of course, you guys will be bringing your own expertise in and will be relying on you. You know, it, at the end, it's up to you how to make this, uh, which project you would like to see on the uh, ICAS platform. Okay, uh, hopefully I answered that one. Mm, okay, let's see if there's anything else in the chat. Uh, just the people that invest in ICO box will have access to, re uh, to review ICOS projects to outside people can also participate. Uh, so yes, uh, if you are an ICOS token holder, you will be able to access only to uh, review. If you do not have any ICOS tokens, of course, you, you cannot like vote or exchange. So if you would like to join our program, which would, um, of course, welcoming you to, uh, you would need to purchase, uh, any amount of ICOS tokens and you'll be able to vote for as long as you like. Because uh, as I mentioned, the tokens are not burned through through voting. <clears throat> um, how long does it take for you to launch an ICO? Uh, so typically we launched our own ICO for ICO box in three weeks. So we just kind of showed that we can do it really, really quick. But an average, an average term is about between maybe two and three months, depending on how much work is done again. If you have like the white paper ready, you have the token concept, like smart contract, if you have everything ready to go, can be taken much quicker, can be taken a few weeks uh, as well. So, and you gotta keep in mind that there's also a PR launch uh, that you have to have your PR company set because it's a very, very huge part of ICO success. And the, P and the PR company normally has to be done one month prior to the launch. That's kind of the way we suggest yeah, the more time, on. the more time you have to build up a community around your project, the better it's for you. Yeah, you can take three months, four months PR. You know, the more PR, the better. Um, it just really depends on your budget. If you if you can do more, of course, it's better. It's better to do more. Okay, now we on to now we on to how are you better than Waves and ICO Promo? If you want to take that, Mike. Well, uh, I mean, uh, Waves and ICO Promo, I think it's the same company. Uh, they are they are brilliant. I, 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 there is one of five teams I actually recommend uh, everyone to you if they are not satisfied with our services, if they don't like us, I don't know. What. But uh, they're totally fine. You can go with Waves, absolutely good. Uh, just double check the conditions, check the terms, read the agreement, and if you're fine with it, you can go with them. Yeah, nothing, so nothing bad with waves. So yeah, it's it's really simple. You guys, are free I mean, there's there so company. so many ICOs coming into the market. It's like on, uh, it's like two hundreds only in September, and I think we'll see about five hundreds uh, per month uh, until the end of the year. And uh, there is like a few companies on the market who provide services for conducting ICOs. So the demand is much better than the <sighs> offer we can yeah. we can provide. Oh boy, we got another 25 questions on the line. Um, okay, let's see, there's one more in chat. What benefits do I have and what is the value of the tokens I own now? So while well, having ICOS tokens, as we mentioned, the main benefit is to be able to choose the projects that go through ICOS platform and to exchange your ICOS tokens into their tokens in uh, one to four ratio at any point in sale. Uh, pre-sale stage, sales stage, or post-sale stage. So I think I also that answer covered some of the questions in Q and A. Um, okay, let's see. Coming back to your 800 ICOs a year, uh, how many oh, will there be? So many high-quality projects. Where would they come from? Um, so as we mentioned. Uh, is we have a lot and a lot of requests daily and this is why we have a really really strong advisory board and this is why we are collecting um, you know as many token holders as we can in order to have as much expertise as we need so at the end the wider our the user base the you know the higher expertise it uh, just goes one on top of another yeah we have quite a big network of uh, venture capital funds of private uh, equity funds and uh, they have uh, like a huge pipeline of projects uh, willing to conduct ICO instead of rising extra around from uh, conventional institutions so uh, I mean ICO is, is very hot now and you, you if you think about it in a way uh, from from the view of the project you 
you get media, you get PR coverage, you get customers, a lot of customers actually, and, and you get paid for this. Come on, why, why not like ICO? It's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, it kind of just it just speaks for itself. Okay, uh, we have we have in chat. Can you suggest the marketing channels used for ICO? So, I personally handled uh, some aspects like media buying. Um, marketing in, in certain channels what i would recommend i guess on my own based on my own experience um, is uh, having purchasing like uh, different articles and banners and uh, large cryptocurrency websites uh, attracts a lot of traffic but uh, one of our main marketing advantages and benefits is the traffic campaign that we do in our marketing package so the traffic campaign is targeting a lot of and a lot of like blockchain users who are interested in blockchain advertising who have purchased tokens before potentially and you know people who respond to advertising very very good in terms of blockchain and that that traffic package for twenty thousand dollars is included in the marketing in, in the marketing part of our ico box service okay um when a company gives you an equivalent of 200 Bitcoin in their token for your services and you give all the token to ICO box members and the funds raised goes to the ICO box company, how do you make a profit? Or does the ICO company does not get anything from selling the tokens through you? Uh, so on top of 200 Bitcoin, uh, I probably, sorry if I forget to mention, there's a 20% that comes for the team in um, pretty much advisory, uh, which is- Mostly for advisory. <laughs> I mean, that's for advisory, referral, and for team as well. So we, yeah, we, 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 so, we don't get so many, so many tokens for each, but yeah. But yeah, we're, see, we're really interested in making this ICO successful because we also hold a part of these tokens and that, that's where, you know, the quality service comes in. That's, that's uh, where all this hard work that we put in, uh, it will pay off, you know, as much based on how, how much input we've put in throughout the ICO service. And we're very interested in giving our uh, most potential effort in every single ICO. I mean, uh, ICOS platform itself uh, allows you, like a token holder, to feel yourself like a, like a big whale, yeah, like a fund that actually buys tokens with a huge discount in the bulk. And we do the same with our ICOS. We use it to exchange, uh, to, to get new tokens and uh, to, to earn on this. Mm -hmm. Okay, how did you calculate this current ratio? Okay, as um, probably already stated, uh, 200 Bitcoin, are come from 50 Bitcoin service times four. So project provides, instead of 50 Bitcoin for the service, they provide 2200 uh, Bitcoin in their tokens. And that's a post payment. So if, uh, 50 divided by 200 is uh, one, well, it's 25%. So that's the 75% discount. Okay, at what stage can ICOS tokens be swapped for another company's tokens? Yes, I think I already mentioned that. Uh, that's during any stage, during pre-sale, during sale, or even during after the sale ended. If there's still any leftover of that project tokens on ICOS platform, uh, feel free to exchange them. That's another one of the advantages that I talked, like the time machine. Okay, uh, what are the pros and cons of an ICO project that doesn't use blockchain? Can such project use utility token? Okay, you, you, want, you want to take that one? Pros and I mean, cons. I, I really don't understand personally, like an ICO project that doesn't use blockchain or isn't like ICO, blockchain go together? Or? Well, I mean, if you don't uh, implement blockchain in your project, how are you going to launch an ICO? Yeah. What, that, what, that, what token do you uh, use? Is, is, uh, do you use smart contract in it? Well, I mean, I see always our blockchain is like driving without wheels. It's like it's yeah, bollocks. kind of, kind of. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, why do you build all your finances around Bitcoin? I think, okay, we answered that question previously. Uh, how's the token prices formed? Uh, I believe we just kind of took the value that was somewhat you know, easy to calculate, right? Was it like just a hundreds of a Bitcoin? 
Oh, okay, sorry. Thousands. Well, we, we, no, we decided to um, make a price that is not very low, not very high, but it's still because one ICAS is one vote. So yeah, if you, if you hold less than one ICAS, you can't vote. You still you can you can still exchange your decimal ICAS for new tokens, but you can't vote with less than one ICAS. So we need to uh, make um, ICAS valuable, so every vote is valuable. And yeah. we, we came up with price that is very easy to understand, easy to calculate. Yep, very easy. Okay, in this case, if you offer some sort of discount on actual services, would that be considered a utility or still security? So if you offer discount on the services you provide, that is a utility token. So you shouldn't be uh, concerned with security in this case, unless you have some sort of complications that go well, but uh, of what I see on here, that's uh, a product token. <clears throat> Okay, ratio that's already done. Um, do you try? Do you charge upfront fees for your services, or you charge after successful ICO launch? So Brian, we do charge, as I mentioned, right upfront and a uh, percent of the uh, success success fee, uh, which depends on the package that is chosen by the ICO box client. It's an it's an ICO box, not an ICOS. Yeah. We don't charge success in ICOS. Uh, was the question in ICOS? Oh, yeah, anyways, yeah, it's an ICO box success fee. Okay, um, if I bought 10 ICOS, can I sell it again? Um, if you bought 10, well, you can exchange it, or I guess if, he, if he's talking about selling it, uh, it's probably I mean, uh, on exchanges. It's it's an ERC twenty token. So uh, um, on twenty second of September, you'll be able to withdraw your tokens to your uh, Ethereum wallet, any wallet you you have, and you can do whatever you want with uh, our tokens. Yeah, with ICAS tokens. You can uh, sell it to your friends if you want. <laughs> <laughs> we are not answering the listing questions for a couple of reasons. So uh, let's just skip it. Yeah, let's skip this one. How long would ICO project take from start to finish? Um, so ICO itself, the terms would be determined by the company by, you know, it, there's many factors. There's factors, how many funds you want to raise, uh, what is your, you know, what is your product like line? What is your timeline for the product? Um, and there's, there's just so many factors. So it, at the end, it's kind of up to you, but the preparation for ICO is, uh, as I mentioned, was about two, three months, an average preparation. Uh, so let's say, I'm just gonna give an example of the ICO that we did in uh, Cryptonomus. I think Gigawatt, we started doing pre-organization in around March, March, February, somewhere there. And the ICO finished uh, July 31st. So that's about five months, five, six months to an ICO. So, I mean, if I don't know what, what the average is, but that's just kind of an example for you guys. Is there a minimum amount needed to buy into ICO box? Uh, I'm assuming you mean, you mean by the tokens. So one, one token. So you, you, could, you need to buy at least one token. You can't buy less than one token. Yeah. So you can purchase, you can purchase like 1.01, .01, but you need to purchase at least at least one token. Okay, what obligations come? Okay, I think I already answered that question. Where the company should be incorporated? Um, I assume you're talking about registering your company for ICO. Um, neither of me nor Mike are lawyers, so we can't. Well, there's give. a couple of jurisdictions that rec yeah. recognize I mean, ICOs, and the market is changing every day. So currently, there is pop some popular destinations as Singapore, Switzerland, Gibraltar, and so on. But please uh, ask a professional lawyer to give you professional advice. We are not we are not attorneys. We can't do this. Yeah, sorry, sorry, guys. Uh, is there a best place to buy cryptocurrencies? Uh, any exchanges or local bitcoins would work fine if you guys weren't looking to get into crypto anytime soon. So perhaps in like Coinbase, um, that's where I, that's where I bought my first Ethereum personally. Okay, uh, not advisory board, advisory fee to determine where the company should corporate it. Uh, so I'm not I'm not getting. Are you getting? Do you see this question, Mike? 
in Q and A. Please, please clarify the question. Yeah, please, please re-ask the question. We'll get, we'll get to it a little bit slower. Okay, there's a new question in chat. Mm -hmm. uh, when I purchased the tokens, I thought that I was buying future tokens that was going to hit the market like Bitcoin or any other market. Are these tokens ever going to be worth anything? How can we, how can we convert them to USD? Um, so these tokens are already worth, uh, I mean, you're purchasing them at like about 50 something dollars. And each token has a purchasing power of four times the value that you purchased if you're exchanging it to other projects. But uh, how would we answer the conversion to USD? Uh, well, I mean, um, there is no, there is no clear answer to this question because uh, you can't exchange ICOs currently. We, our ICO is not finished yet. But after you finish our ICO, you possibly you, you probably will be able to sell your ICOs to someone somehow, and you definitely will be able to swap your ICOs for new tokens that uh, I think will be listed somewhere, and uh, you will be able to you know to get some something. But uh, guys, we don't talking about speculation. We're talking about building new market, build, building new uh, platform. And uh, please don't consider it like a uh, quick money. It's not. It's not about uh, making some X10. It's about building the future. Yeah. So you got you got to think a little bit bigger here. Okay. Why are you so sure that the quality projects will come to you? Because actually, some of them already did. I mean, look at Paragon Coin. That's I think we think it's really, really great opportunity for the like, cannabis industry. Look at the token stars uh, who before would try to tokenize like soccer players and tennis players. I'm personally, I'm actually a tennis coach, <laughs> so I, I might be getting into that one just because I want to see some of those celebrities. Um, I mean. This all these ideas we see in our inbox. I, I wish we could share them with you, but I mean, these projects are great. There's so much potential in blockchain to develop in real world that, uh, yeah, I can't I can really. No, we're getting speak uh, about fantastic that. applications from projects that are disrupting freelance industries, internal think industries. So from I think from we have even some biotech projects implementing a blockchain. So. Almost every industry has some uh, room for blockchain and uh, we are getting a lot of quality applications. Yeah, definitely. Okay, uh, can you repeat your fees, please? Yeah, yeah, sure. So full package, 50 Bitcoin and 3% success fee, which is legal, marketing and tech solutions, three packages. Um, to any two solutions out of those three would be to, uh, 40 Bitcoin and 2% success fee and any one solution is 25 bitcoin and one percent success fee how did you succeed to hunt such famous advisors any advice how to attract them um we've been traveling quite a few conferences in blockchain i personally traveled some last few weeks uh so you just get to meet people tell about your project you get together you know talk maybe outside of the conference it's really you're just kind of making friends but then these friends become interested in your project that's how i personally got some of these people um i mean don't, don't be shy yeah yeah don't be shy. Just, use the network use use linkedin use facebook to connect with people it's all about so, network. yeah it, it's really just spread the word and then people come to you if they're really interested in your project can we accept only ethereum during our ico uh I believe, I believe that's yes, possible. yes. So you, you you can totally go with only Ethereum. It's I just, up to you. I just and don't. I, I don't understand the, the sense. Yeah, why? Yeah, just I don't. Why? I don't understand why. But yeah, sure. If I you mean, want to, Ethereum, Ethereum is more volatile. If you are no, if you want to convert your crypto into US dollars, you should stick with less volatile currency. But it's up to you, totally. Can you please give us a list of all crypto? Currencies and their ICO dates. Uh, that would, I don't have that knowledge, but I can tell you the website Coin Market Cap. If you're really interested, uh, please go check it. it. Has all the information you need. Uh, who do you recommend as white paper drafting company? 
Good well, guys, you, you need to do your white paper. I see a box. We recommend I see a box. <laughs> no, we, I, 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 no, we help you structure the white paper. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> white paper is, 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 is it's your job to write a white paper because it's actually you addressing your community and telling what's, what, what's part of the project. What are they doing? How do you yeah. do it? Nobody, Nobody knows, knows the project better, better than, you. than you. Oh, we said it at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, that's just common sense. It's like, you know, it's like uh, who can write a novel for me, yeah? Yeah. Nobody. Um, do you have any stats regarding percentage of successful ICOs? I believe 80% are successful. That's what I had last time, statistics, some of that. Uh, it depend, depending on what you call successful. Well, I guess going from start to finish. Well, uh, I remember last time I was having the webinar, uh, I mentioned that about 20% their price was um, being below. Oh, you, you, mean, you mean performance? Okay. I guess, okay. yeah, but that was performance wise. So, yeah, 80% of the tokens are traded above their initial price offered. Um, that's just general statistics. How can I go work for your company? Uh, you can just, I guess you can send an application to Mike's email. I don't think he mind reviewing it. Well, the easiest way just to fill the, the form on our website. Uh, it's for the projects, but we uh, are getting applications from uh, guys who want to work with us. Somebody. Yeah, we're looking to expand the team. Just shoot a message. Um, always happy to have new people on board. Will I be able to view this webinar later? I just found out about this project. Uh, yeah, we're planning to uh, leave a recording later after that webinar mm -hmm. is over. Can real life offline businesses raise money in ICO restaurants? Learns, yeah, of course, there is no limit to ICO. Uh, well, we've seen we've seen successful uh, ICOs of uh, co-working projects, of uh, sand mining projects, and so on. So I think there is no problem with real. Actually, I, I I'm looking forward to see more uh, to see more uh, real offline projects doing ICOs because it makes yeah. total sense. I'll be happy to work with this project. If you guys come to me with an offline project, I'll try to make some cool token structure for you guys. Uh, yeah, so there's that. How exactly are you going to address the... Re okay, we already talked about second China decisions. Uh, Mike already answered that. Is your I ICO box package turnkey? So there's only a few things I guess that we provide sort of turnkey, which is uh, giving the marketing, uh, that was uh, marketing the traffic, uh, sorry, I meant to say the traffic package, where we send it to your website, the, the traffic, and we provide, I guess, smart contract and the structure of the book building platform. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, but I think those are the only services that we provide. We're not, we're not completely turnkey, but we need, yeah, we need our clients to participate in ICO. Your mic was a little bit glitching. Sorry, guys. Okay, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties. But, okay, I'm just going to continue for for Mike. Yeah, this is not a turnkey solution. This is, more, uh, this is more of a consulting solution. However, some things, of course, are, as I mentioned, are offered. Uh, well, turnkey. Okay. Uh, we know our project, but need professional drafting white paper. Do we, do you have any, do you know any services, Mike, that can help with writing the yes, white paper? You need to do some, you know, some initial, uh, to, to put some initial information in your white paper. So what is your project basically about? Then you either speak with us and we'll make like a, like a chart, uh, we'll ask you questions and you will answer them in your white paper. We could recommend somebody who can do the job for you, but we do we, we do insist that uh, guys you should do it. Yeah, so it would be. It would be I mean, the white paper is the only uh, real big work you are doing uh, during the ICO that you, you're required to do. It's, it's it's a description of your project. You 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 can't skip it. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have a great project. Can we start working with you today? Who should we contact? Yes, uh, you can start by sending an application form. Uh, you can contact uh, any of us directly through any social media or whichever way you want. We'll uh, hop on the call and discuss all the terms. That's quite, that's always possible. 
where is ICO box located? Okay, I believe we're registered in Cayman Islands, uh, but physically we're worldwide. Uh, yeah, we have offices in uh, San Francisco and London. So yeah, we main offices. Oh yeah, we have two main offices, but all our employees are located worldwide. So far, and this is the last question. Continuing the question about offline business, how do such business utilize tokens except of equity share? So there's really no limits to what like you know the token structure can be can be created. It can besides like you know having the equity share, which of course um, seems to be the most logical way. Um, any offline business, for example, uh, let's say we're doing an office ICO, right? We can structure tokens as having like a square feet or square inches having equal to a certain amount of tokens. And you will be able to list that token out. So, and it's still a product token, right? There's no profit share, there's nothing. You're just attaching the tokens to the physical property. Um, that, that model works fine. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to, into details, but. Yeah, there's a number of approaches that are quite popular from the discount model. It's uh, VIP services models or some subscription models that provide you with some extras. Uh, you can have your tokens and you can lend them for someone, for example, as well. And there's a couple of approaches we do recommend to use when um, speaking uh, of uh, offline businesses. Just come to us, we'll have a talk, and uh, I hope you like it. Yep. Okay. So this so far is all the questions. If there's any more questions, please ask. Um, if not, we'd like to thank all of you guys for joining in today. We hope we answered all the questions that you guys have. Um, if you have any others, uh, feel free to shoot them on the email and you can uh, please visit our Telegram chat. We're always uh, talking about ICO box there. So it's kind of a quick way to reach any of us. You'll see us in the chat. Um, thank you guys again. And I guess Mike, should we stop here? Yeah, thank you guys. Have a lovely day or evening. So take care. Good luck. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone.